Hello everybody, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Shiva Ravindra. Today I am going to explain you the useful SAS techniques in efficacy analysis for oncology study class 2. In the class 1 we have discussed right now so overview about the endpoints related to the oncology in this class 2. So I will uh, explain you uh, so what is the data collection and how the adverse event reporting overview about the oncology okay so in this data collection so mainly you know so the data collection was happen you know all studies were you now we take the data from the crf okay so paper crf was converted to electronic form by you know clinical data management team so there was you know doing some data entry and they are doing some you know database related work and they can convert the paper CRF information to the database and they created the SAS data. So in this oncology studies along with the safety data oncology trials required more information to be collected from the CRF to evaluate the efficacy analysis because efficacy analysis most of the information we captured from the CRF that CRF information captured from the CRO people uh, while doing the clinical trial. So here are some of the informations like along with the safety efficacy like tumor related measurements and how the tumor was reacted and what is the result that was given by the tumor upon treatment and you know so SEOG performance, ECOG performance related information. So we have to collect it from the CRF. So here I am showing some screenshot about the CRF how the information was collected. So this CRF was case report form was individual patient separate wise. So they entered the data and the information was converted into the SAS data set and we use the data set for the analysis purpose. And third important in the oncology introduction adverse event relay reporting. So generally adverse events are collected in the CRF and that was reported in the safety analysis. But in case of oncology, so there is a National Cancer Institute was a developed oncology specified guideline that is called CTCA grading, National Terminology Criteria for Adverse Events. So as per this criteria for adverse event document, so the all the adverse events are scaled up to so 1 to 5, so grade 1 to grade 5 okay so the ctca grade document is available in the google or you know cds portal so version 5 was available so in this common terminology criteria for adverse event document you will see all the adverse events are categorized into soc and prefrontal as well as grading wise grade 1 is the mild grade 2 is the moderate grade 3 is the severe grade 4 is the life threatening Grade 5 is a death related adverse event. So, all adverse events are categorized into 5 as per the CTCA grading, as well as here you can see AE also coded preferred termite, system organic class, medical history regulation, and additionally classified by the severity of via CTC. Okay, so here you can see all the SOCs and PTs. So some criteria they have defined in the control terminology criteria CTCA grade document. So for example, anemia is there. So anemia uh, preferred term was categorized into 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So based upon the data available for the subject who has adverse events of anemia, so they will categorize, you know, based upon the hemoglobin level. So they will give some criteria and you know, so they have categorized that particular adverse event comes under which grade like that the data was created and the data we can analysis based upon the grading session okay so here the AE was coded preferred term and system organic class and here you can see the adverse events are reported system organic class and preferred term wise as well as relationship wise severity wise and dose reduction wise adverse event tables we generated so most of the safety related and parallel studies so we have sub treatment emergent AE 
nothing but so those adverse events were happening after taking the treatment or due to the treatment any adverse events were happening so those we can consider as treatment emergent adverse event some of the studies they mentioned some criteria like so first dose of the day to so 28 or 38 grace period of the last dose okay one of the tab here you can see they mentioned treatment emergent adverse events are defined as sign or symptom that emerge during the treatment or within 28 days of the last dose of investigation product so they consider those type of adverse events are treatment emergent adverse event that means for example today adverse event is happening so tomorrow is the last day of that treatment dose even 28 days after taking the last dose also if any adverse event is happening so those adverse event they consider as treatment emergent adverse event in some safety related study in case of a crossover studies crossover studies in the sense like this so one subject is taking the treatment a in the period one so he is going to take the treatment b so if the subject is taking the treatment b in the first period he is going to take the treatment a in the second period so in this case if any adverse event is happening so typically we identify at the moment of the adverse event is happening whether the subject is in period one or period two that time which treatment he has taken that treatment we can assign as trt okay due to that treatment only the adverse event is happening okay here you can see one subject vomiting was happening on the first period so that is why a that same subject having headache at the second period the treatment is b due to b treatment this headache was happening due to a treatment vomiting was happening so there is a something like crossover studies are some complex uh, to identify based upon the adverse event started which treatment has you know uh, cause that adverse event okay so we have to create the table in such a way in case of oncology or other studies of parallel across our studies okay so along with this one incident of rates of treatment emerging a is we generally displayed system organ class and preferred term wise counts percentages frequencies etc